two things I want to do first is first uh, just congratulate Michigan State like that's they're, they're, it's unbelievable that like people have like counted them out for dead and it's you know, ten games into the season right there's a reason like that coach is in the Hall of Fame there's a reason why they have really good players there's a reason why they're in the top 25 just last week Right. There's a reason why they beat Kentucky. There's a reason why they had a chance to beat Gonzaga. Like, they're a good team. <laughs> they're a good team. Um, they're also prideful. And that program's prideful. And uh, they weren't going to come in here and just lay down. Like, they lost two straight games. So, um, you know, we need to play better. We need to play better. Um, also appreciate, appreciate our fans. You know, I said stuff this week, um, you know, trying to get them there trying to get them here and, uh, and and they showed up right we had a bunch of a bunch of people showed up a bunch of students showed up and and I appreciate that uh, like don't leave us now like stick with us like this is you know I'm as frustrated as it gets I'm as, I'm, I'm as mad as competitive as it gets um, we're gonna fix our problems we're gonna fix our issues and we're gonna have a chance in every single game we play uh, but I appreciate everybody that that showed up tonight you know, I called for it, and they arrived. So maybe I should shut up and coach my team better. Yeah. Micah, um, were you watching the Northwestern Michigan State game, and you were were you sad to see Northwestern win because you know what could happen? <laughs> you know what? It, it's um, you could probably I don't know if there's a way to track this, but it felt like every game last year. Right before we played somebody, they got beat. <laughs> it, it it was like clockwork that it happened, and um, you know, I I tried like I knew what was coming through this door. Yeah, especially with Izzo, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah you know it was so I mean. prideful. Yeah. I knew what was coming through this door, and and I tried to heed that warning to our guys, and that you know, maybe part of that is why we didn't shoot so well. Maybe we put so much pressure on ourselves. To win this, that you know, we're squeezing the ball too tight because we're getting we're getting open looks, we're getting open shots. But maybe I put too much pressure on our guys, um, and that's something that you know I, I should probably be better at. Of like, we got to be on the edge, uh, but we also got to be loose, and we also got to play free. And um, you know, it didn't feel like that for us. Did you do that because it was Michigan State? No. Um, Really, just anybody like the the, the Big Ten starting. Yep. Uh, no matter who was coming in here, right? We were going from like boiling water to the frying pan. It was getting hot, and the temperature was getting turned up with who's coming in here. Um, but we also we get one chance in Michigan State, one crack at them, right? Like this was this was a big game for us, and uh, you know, we wanted we wanted to play well for our fans. We wanted to play well at home. Uh, we wanted to prove ourselves and. You know, maybe it was, maybe it was too much, because um, we didn't respond the whole time. I, I thought we we started out well, and then we kind of backtracked too much. Michael, with a minute fifty to go, there was a moment where you uh, shook hands with Tom. There was an interaction there. He he told us about it, but mm -hmm. that was like unique. Um, what? How, how did that unfold? And if you can, what were you guys talking about? Yeah, yeah no, that that was me and Hogard going after, like. That I'm I'm a competitor. I know he is too, right? So like we you know we're yelling at each other on the sidelines. But I love it. That's why I went to him right after that. I yelled at him out of the timeout. Hey, love it. Love that kid, man. I love how he competes, right? So Coach Izzo was like, he was apologizing to me because he had said something to me, and I told him no, like that we're just competing, right? That's it. Like you have, um, I got so much respect for for the the guys in this league. Um, and how they go about their business. Like, I know how good that kid is. I know how he's, like, he's a fighter. Uh, that's who he is. So I've, I've loved competing against him, right? That, I've, I've had a chance to go against him now for a bunch of years in a row. Um, that's all that was. Like, you know, I got so much respect for Coach um, and his program. But I got a lot of respect for that kid, too. But, you know, we're just competing. There's just, just guys out there competing against each other. It was, it's all good. But, like, that's kind of the respect I got for, for Coach Izzo and his program and everything else. He's apologizing to me. I'm like, 
don't know, man. It was like we were all out here competing. This is fun. That was fun, man. It's fun. It's fun out here to play against people. It's fun out here to try and figure out how to get stops. It's fun out here to try and figure out how to score. Um, I love that part of the game, man. I'm, I wasn't a very good player, but I was a player at one point in time. Sometimes that player comes out. Mike, um, over here, sorry. <laughs> going back to A.J. Hogard a little bit, and I mean, for him, when he gets downhill like that on people, how much of a problem can he be when he's in the paint like that? Yeah, I mean, he puts um, puts pressure on him. You gotta have a bigger a bigger guard that can stay with him and can stay in front of him. But then, you know, when Tyson Walken gets going as well at the same time, um, you gotta have two good guards that can guard pick and rolls, right? Like, you know, can't keep flipping one guy off and one guy off. You know, he he has a chance to attack. He's so physical, he can get into the lane and kind of keep you on his hip or on his back, or he can drive, and big guys don't bother him. Right? Like, we're not very big, but he does it against everybody. Right? He did it against Alabama. He did it against whoever. Like, he goes and he drives and he attacks big guys and he scores it. Like, that's that's what he does. So, um, you know, I thought he just, like, he, when they get down in games, when they get down at, at certain points, he tries to will them back. That's who he is. That's who he is as a player. And, um uh, like the guy makes huge plays for him, and, and yeah, he's hard to stop. Like you gotta, you gotta figure some stuff out when he's tacking downhill at full speed like that. Look, uh, late in the game, there was the carry call on Seth, and then right after the no call on Jalen. You know, what are your thoughts on those calls and on calls, and how important do you think that sequence was in the, the grand scheme of the game? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's it is what it is. Like, you know, I'm, I gotta go back and watch it. Like, you know. I, when I'm when the game's going on, I think I'm a ref, right? and then you know sometimes I miss a lot of things when I go back and watch. I want to go see it. Um, you know that was a huge possession for us. Like we needed something out of that, so um, you know it was a big call. But you know I'll, I'll see it, see what happens, and go from there. Like um, I don't know, we got we got good officials in this league, and we got to the free throw line more than we've gotten to the free throw line. All season, it feels like we didn't convert. We didn't, we need to convert better when we do get the opportunities to get there. Uh, but you know, it's both teams competing. I, I'd like to look at it and see like what it was, yeah, because it was a huge goal. You know, in that point in the game, we had gotten a few stops in a row. Now you get that stop and you get a bucket, and you know, it just changes the uh, changes like the the game, the flow of the game, and what's going on. And early in the like a. Uh, Izzo was in here obviously earlier, and he was talking about how they were looking to limit uh, Jalen. From your perspective, what did they do successfully in that? And I mean, that's of course relative. He still had their team. And then regarding the threes as well, what uh, the percentage was a little bit lower than normal. So kind of break down that for me. Please. Yeah, uh, they did a good job of like keeping a bigger body on him, pushing him out. Um, they, they guarded us. They tried to get under a bunch of ball screens. We got to do a better job of setting them at a better angle so they can't. The few times we did, then they got messed up on the switch. Now he turned the corner one time and scored. He turned the corner and got a switch, and, like, he got to the basket the way he wanted to. Um, but he also, like, I mean, you, you look at it. Like, he went 5 for 14. Like, I mean, he's backing guys, like, to the concession stand. He's got to make them, right? Make or miss game. Joey Alzer does the same thing. He makes his. You got to make him on the other end. I love pick. Like, you know, dude got 17 rebounds tonight. Had eight assists. Like, he's doing a lot for us. And, like, he's probably pissed. He's probably mad at, at some of the opportunities that he had there near the basket. Um, that he, you know, some that he normally makes, he just missed it. You know, and, and that's, sometimes that's the game. Sometimes that's the game when you're getting the ball in the paint. You got to convert like that. I, I don't. Like I still like the threes that that we took. There's a couple like that that we took that were rushed, that were quick, um, that I'd love to have back. You know, I didn't think we played particularly good offensively. We didn't move it the way we needed to. Um, we didn't do what we were practicing either. All right, we got we're gonna watch that tomorrow. We're gonna learn from it. They they're a good defensive team. I thought they took some stuff away, um, but there's some. I mean. Pick it, he had a layup, passes up, and kicks it out to Miles. Like, that's a wide open three. 
right? He's in the middle of paint, and they double, and he kicks it to Cam Winter at the top. of That's a wide open three. Like, I don't know what more you want. <laughs> You're trying to run offense to get layups, to get open threes. We're getting wide open threes. We just didn't convert them. Uh, you know, you got to live with it. You got to live with it. There's some I'd like to have back, but, you know, I'd probably take those same shots from those same guys. What's the balance for you of trying to get Funk going, um, you know, just forcing it to him versus just the flow of the game? Yeah, uh, he's done a good job of trying to get him in transition as well, which I think, you know, kind of gets him going a little bit. Like, we ran a play, start the game, shot off the side of the backboard, right? Like, maybe that affected him a little bit where, he, you know, he was a little bit off, like, after that. So maybe that don't run that play again, Coach Shrews. Um, but, you know, you, you want to get him moving. You want to have him doing stuff. Um, you know, people are still worried about it. Like, he went oh, one for four, oh, a three from three, and, like, you still got to guard him. You still got to be out there. You still got to worry about how you're guarding him, which takes the focus, puts focus on him, and it takes away from other guys. Um, you know, I think that's where you got to get some more of those, some of the shots at the rims. I mean, like maybe some of our big guys got to convert more at the rim because people are outside worried about Funk. They're getting the ball at the rim. We got to turn those into buckets, right? That like that Funk's never going to get credit for that, but that you know, it's it's a Hockey assists, even though he never touched the ball. He's just lifting. People are worried about it. Guys are getting behind him, getting to the rim and getting layups. We just got to score. We got to take advantage of that, and we got to take, uh, we got to get points out of that. And that's uh, sometimes that's the difference between winning and losing. So uh, we'll keep doing it. Like he'll be better. He'll be better for us. And uh, you know, we got to get better defensively. We got to be better as a team. We got to be tougher. We got to be more gritty. Uh, you know, or you know, this situation is going to happen a lot. I wonder what you make of their roster this year. And as you were scouting them, and you saw different games, and they've gone through a few different lineups and different things. Just sort of what you see um, from a team that's still figuring itself out, but probably has some versatility. And yeah, I think they will. Uh, more versatility, like when they um, when they get Malik Hall back. Now they're able to play smaller in different ways, right? Like today, they when they go small, they just have to play a lot of say at Whitens or Wittens, like. They have to play him more as the four. Like, you know, those are those are minutes where Malik calls in. Right now, you're worried about they're running floppy with um, Tyson Walker coming off. And now you got to worry about the post up on both sides from those guys. Um, you know, I think Sissoko. I think the fouls kind of took him out of it a little bit um, in the first half. He didn't really get into a rhythm, but he's played a lot better um, now. Like, the more guys that they have, I, I think. The Jay Nakins gets more comfortable. Like, you know, he stepped up and made those shots tonight. Like, that's who he is. He's not the guy that was, whatever, over on, on the season since he's been back. Like, he's a much better shooter than that. He's more athletic. He's a guy that they'll start to play faster, I think, and get down the court. They got us a couple times in transition when we didn't get back and match up the right way. So, um, they're just, they're, they're tough, they're gritty. They know who they are. They know who they are. They know who they're going to. I think that's the, when you look at the best teams, um, like when the game was on the line, they went to Hauser, they went to Walker, they went to Hogard, and everybody else played off of that, right? Like you watch Purdue play, they go to Zach, everybody plays off of that. Like you watch Indiana, they go to Trace, and everybody plays off of that. Like that's what the best teams do. That's what the best teams do. And now, you know, they got multiple guys that can do that. They're a good team. They're a good team. They're they're gonna be they're gonna be fine. Last question. Mark. Like uh, Jalen and Seth were in here, and they both seem very cognizant of what Keba is going through as a kid with a high upside who gets frustrated at times. How important is it for them to to, to, to be able to help him along and that and does that allow you to be maybe bad cop a little bit and them good cop? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Uh, I'm probably a bad cop with everybody, <laughs> if you would ask him, right? I probably need to be good cop more with him uh, just to try and help him, right? You want to, like, it's hard, man. It's a hard league for a freshman to come in and play in that position, but he's talented enough. He's good enough. He's got to believe in himself.
He's got to believe in himself. He's got to believe in the things that have gotten him here. Um, and when he makes mistakes, he's got to play through them. And they all do. Caleb's the same way. Like, when he makes a mistake, play through it. And like, don't get down on yourself because it's going to happen. It's going to happen to every single person. And, um, you know, the, the more that we can get from him as the year goes on and on, um, the better we'll be. And, you know, he's learning. He's learning on the fly. It's trial by fire, man. It'd be like, um, you know, if some 18-year-old kid was named the, like, CEO of some company and he'd never done it before. And he's got to figure out what he's supposed to be doing, like, at you know, all while running this thing without it going under. Um, a kid is... 18 years old, turned 18 at the end of August, like math, I, I always talk about my math, but that's September, October, November, it's early December, it's 18 years and four months, and I was 18 years and four months, and like, you know, I want to know what I was doing, it wasn't positive. Thank you. Thank you, guys. None of us are beating you right now. <laughs> <laughs>